Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Are Battlegrounds in trouble? Because, well, I have a few things to go by that do not, uh, well, seem too encouraging. Number one is obviously my own experience and my own engagement level with Battlegrounds. And uh, I can openly say I uh, have been decreasing my time spent in Battlegrounds. I have been decreasing the effort spent in Battlegrounds. And also all my enjoyment levels have decreased, which I'm going to break down exactly as to why. Number two is I hear a lot of that from my viewer base whenever I do stream Battlegrounds. You know, I get comments like I pretty much have stopped playing Battlegrounds or I do the bare minimum and i'm just you know enjoying watching the streams or that doesn't seem to be too much too worth it and uh i i'm kind of inclined to agree i do think that there are quite a few things at the moment going wrong with battlegrounds and uh that has a huge effect on mcoc itself especially because battlegrounds objectively is the premium premier game mode of mile concert champions right now and neither Alliance worth, neither Battlegrounds are doing too great. And introduction of raids hasn't gone down too well also. So without trying to sound too pessimistic at all, I have definitely not noticed kind of deflating player sentiment where they are starting to say that this game feels more chore, they're having less fun with it. And that is direct result of the premium game modes failing. Because, you know, if incursions sucks, incursions suck, you know? we we got other thing to do it's not that big of a deal if there's some other piece of content like side event that comes out and it's not fun or engaging or it's too grindy we get over it because there are these core elements that you know uh give us the most endorphins that we are most committed to and uh, for last year it definitely has been battlegrounds overall whether you like battlegrounds or not personally i think it's impossible to deny that battlegrounds has changed the game the way we see champions and also kind of revitalized it but that's kind of going away because Battlegrounds are not a new thing anymore. There are quite a few new trends that I think are working together to kind of decrease participation and decrease the engagement of players in regards to Battlegrounds. And uh, number one, the obvious one, the rewards. Uh, when you take a look at Battlegrounds rewards, they have, I believe, gone away at this point. Um, especially in like the solo events, the, if it shows here... This is the first time ever since Battlegrounds came out, I didn't hit all the solo events. Uh, all the solo event milestones. And you know why? I'm going to explain exactly why I didn't hit all the solo event milestones. It's because it's 6-star shots. I mean, like, who cares? Like, it, it's genuinely just stupid 6-star shots. Uh, I think it's absolutely abysmal that, you know, the top reward in the Battlegrounds solo event is 1,500 6-star shots. It was already quite weak a year ago when the Balagons are released, it's absolutely relevant right now. Like, if you are somebody who plays Balagons more hardcore, and if you are a Valiant level player, this means nothing to you. So, yeah, I, I didn't do... This is the first time ever I didn't actually even hit the milestones. And even the rank rewards, when you take a look at them, yeah, 7 star shards are there, and they're nice, obviously, you always want more 7 star shards, but they're far from the only source of 7 star shards in the game. They're not anywhere near as, you know, alluring as they used to be. Especially, you know, when Kabam is doing these $20 Valiant uh, daily cards that give you like 2,000 Titan shards or something like that. And a bunch of other goodies. And the rest of the stuff here is 6 stars. Again, like, you know, 6 stars, 6 stones, 6 star Awakening gems that are completely relevant and the slight amount of 6 star shards. So, one thing that I definitely notice whenever Kabam does the bump in the solo objectives and alliance objectives by adding some more tier 6 cc in it adding some titan shards in it automatically a lot more people jump in it because those are items that they actually want to acquire opposed to you know who's going to get motivated by you know i think it's total fifteen thousand six star shards in the solo milestones yes there are rank rewards again but again most of the rank rewards are six star centric and they're just nowhere near as lucrative similar to the alliance rewards yes they did kind of get buffed but that great and perhaps most importantly um uh, store store at this point uh Valiant genuinely seems outdated uh my single biggest source of uh tier 6 basics tier 3 alphas tier 6 cc is pretty much the daily valiant crystals not the Balagon store anymore 
When Balmion Store got introduced, it was head and shoulders above everything else. And it just isn't anymore. It definitely needs an update on every level, but especially it needs adding like some sort of Valiant tier. Because, you know, you, I'm, I'm playing kind of like just enough to get the bits that I care about the most, like tier 6 CCs. Uh, I use it to kind of equal out whatever tier 6 basics, tier 3 alphas I have. That's just about it. And again, it's far from exciting. Uh, there was a time when I eagerly awaited every Monday knowing Balrion Sword will reset, I'm going to grab all the stuff, and then, you know, I'm going to be closer to my rank up. Now I don't really have to do that anymore. Um, and I just don't because, uh, again, daily Valiants, you know, crystals give you more stuff than in terms of rank up materials than you can get here. So the store is also in an urgent need of update without any questions. Hopefully Kabam does that sooner or later. But I think there's more to it. I think uh, the rewards is just one side of it. Obviously, Kabam drastically increasing the rewards would be a very, very quick fix to it. But there are more things in regards of the gameplay and the metas itself. I'll be absolutely honest. And here's the thing. I like Na as a guy. I think he's very, very, very smart. Uh, I think, you know, he's relatively new to the company. So it's, you know, impossible to jump to any conclusions yet. But whatever has been happening with the metas, hasn't been well received overall based on you know what I have asked from people. Uh, most of the metas, uh, they, I, it's hard to explain, especially with, with the introduction of attackers buffs and with the overly specific uh, defensive nodes. It feels too much control that Kabam is assuming over the game mode. It doesn't feel like I have these champions they're like using. Obviously, some of them will not work. Few will work better. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to have fun. It feels like Kabam specifically has a list of champions that are going to be viable for this. And you're going to use, a, you know, a variation of these 50 champions if you will want to play well. Uh, the fact that, you know, there are champions that you simply could have not been able to use because of nodes for like four months that are many people's favorites is coming more and more into a factor. Like, you know, majority of the metas, you know, completely eliminate Juggernaut. For whatever reason, Valkyrie has caught astray. Valkyrie is a phenomenal BG champion and has been for like half a year. And then all of a sudden these new nodes come in and pretty much, you know, Valkyrie is unusable in all of them. And additionally to all of that, these, again, offensive buffs kind of like feel like you're being forced into like tighter and tighter and smaller and smaller mold which uh doesn't feel like me playing the game mode as much as it feels i'm doing what the kabam is telling me to do and one of the coolest things about this game and balance in general is that you could do previously kind of whatever you wanted if you thought you know havoc is going to do great or no is going to do great or some other random champion you could rank it up and test it and probably it would work out now it feels like Kabam is telling you which champions are going to do great because they are having these attack buffs, making specific champions significantly more effective. Then there are these defensive buffs that are completely invalidating like a huge amount of champions, both defensively and offensively. And again, I think it just narrows the game down a lot more. And the side effect of that is it separates much more into peoples of haves and have nots because obviously these champions change quite quickly. And you can rank up somebody specifically for Battlegrounds, and then for the next three months, that champion is going to be unusable. For instance, if we take a look at all of these three, a uh, run of this, uh, these three metas, you know, somebody pulls a 7 star Juggernaut, they rank him up, and they're excited, and he worked in, I believe, in like one victory track meta well, and then in most of the metas, he's just not going to work. And uh, obviously there is something to be said about ranking up specifically for metas in-game and stuff like that, but I still think it's far too controlled, far too tight, uh, and it's not something, you know, uh, people are enjoying as much. Uh, whether you agree or disagree with it, but, you know, I definitely have not heard very good reviews of player satisfaction of the metas chosen recently. And again, to, to be clear, I like Nat. It's nothing personal to him. I wish him the best. I hope he makes the best game mode and the best metas possible for us. I just don't think it has been happening. And the last thing that I'm kind of worried in the game, and I'll probably uh, create a separate video for that, is uh, Defenders. Uh, I think players are getting more and more frustrated with the champions that Kabam has been releasing. 
Um, and here the best uh, comparison would be like when Kabam uh, didn't release an, any new prestige champion for like a year. Almost every top alliance prestige differed by like one point or they were like effectively exactly the same maxed out prestige. And then Kabam kind of woke up and they released Omega Sentinel and then they released Quicksilver and then they released Infamous Iron Man and then they released something else. And, and it pretty much became impossible to keep up with the prestige race without massive, massive, massive monetary investment. And that was the time I, myself, and uh, many other people kind of gave up on the prestige chase. You know, we kind of take a look at it, but by no means I'm like making my rank of decisions anymore based on which are like top five prestige champions, like I used to previously, because prestige was that more important. And it was actually possible, you know, to kind of try and keep up. Uh, because after one, I spent like money trying to chase a Sentinel, that was quite expensive. Then I spent money chasing Quicksilver, that was even more expensive. And then Infamous Iron Man comes out and I was like, done. I'm not spending on this. If I get him, I get him. If I don't, I don't. Whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I think it's similar case of a defensive burnout that we could be in risk. Because uh, there was a while in Balgrounds where there weren't that many great defenders. And pretty much every meta seemed quite nuky meta because offensive champions seem to be kind of like dominating and you know defenders were not necessarily as capable of stopping them uh, but now i think kabam is in a very very real danger in overshooting with the defensive champions that they release because they need more and more specific counters they need you know uh regardless of the counter they might be delaying you a ton and then there are champions like you know bullseye who comes out because like one or two good counters in a game and it is a definition of have or have not a acquisition and uh if you release one champion like that in like three four months period i think that's perfectly fine it gives players time to learn how to fight him how to counter him how to dex all the special attacks you know get accustomed to their abilities but uh in the last several months we have had like bullseye onslaught maestro photon wasn't long before that and uh it becomes like a full-time job trying to learn how to fight these champions trying to learn how to dex these champions and players from my conversations with my viewers are effectively burnt out. It's you, you don't know what to ban anymore. It's like because there are too many quote unquote auto ban champions in Balgrounds. And uh, even if you, and, and obviously some champions do slip through the cracks, and uh, then it's kind of like if they draft it, unless you get one or two specific champions, it's an auto loss against that champion. So it makes the game, for, game mode feel not only more random because it's more draft dependent, but it also makes it feel much more frustrating because you already know ahead of time that you're going to be screwed. And again, that is definitely not increasing the level of enjoyment for Battlegrounds, especially at community at large. Obviously, that is something that might cater to the top 0.0001% of really, really, really hardcore players. But I think a lot of them, even a lot of them, are starting to kind of get burnt out with this. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. I, I, I love Balgrounds. <laughs> I want the Balgrounds to be the best game mode it possibly can. And I'm genuinely worried because, you know, even my own engagement levels with Balgrounds are falling. And, you know, somebody in comments can come and say, that, oh, you're always complaining and you're being negative and stuff like that. And, you know, stop whining, man up or whatever. Uh, but the point is, you know, that is the general sentiment in the community, whether you personally like it or not. I think, you know, all the data, all the statistics and, you know, whatever you could discuss with people overall would agree with that. You know, they have been playing Balgrounds less, whether it's because of the rewards, whether because they don't like the metas, whether because the champions are more frustrating, whether it's any of those other reasons. That doesn't change, you know, the fact that it's happening, you know, Balgrounds popularity is dropping, Balgrounds excitement levels are dropping, and uh, I hope Kabam recognizes that early enough and takes action early enough um, before, you know, more and more of these players, you know, take more, more permanent steps back or scale back the MCOC thing in general. That is all I'm trying to do here. <laughs> when I make a video like this, I'm genuinely trying to be helpful and I'm genuinely trying to, you know, uh, 
create a discussion because I do believe Kabam has blind spots. And I do believe Kabam can, you know, get uh, high on their own supply at times. And I'm afraid it could happen again. Yet again, here. So I do think that we need some significant changes to Balgrounds sooner rather than later. Let me know what you guys think, and I'm going to catch you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about